Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we're going to be starting to look at drying. Now, this material comes from Chapter 9 in the Giancopolis textbook. And again, this is more of where we have this uh, combination of heating or heat transfer and mass transfer. Another thing that we will need to deal with here specifically is humidification and how to use this to design a process intended to dry wet materials. We are mostly going to be looking at problems where water is the one that's being removed, but understand that the definitions that relate to humidity can be adapted to drying other liquids from a product. Now why does this matter? Well first, drying is driven by both heat and mass transfer. And we're going to be able to add heat or remove water by heat addition, by direct contact with a hot gas, and then the liquid will evaporate and carry away part of that liquid into the gas. Um, you can, in fact, dry things by adding steam. You can do vacuum drying, which can evaporate the water at low pressure by heating the walls with radiation. You can do freeze drying, which sublimes the water from the frozen material. When we talk about direct drying, we mean that the solids are exposed to a hot gas. Indirect drying, the heat transfer comes from an external medium. Usually it is a hot surface, but it's not from the hot gas. The equipment that we can use is tray dryers, vacuum shelf, indirect drying, continuous tunnel dryers, rotary dryers, drum dryers, spray dryers, drying of crops and grains. Lots of different ways that we dry things. So the first of these is a tray dryer. And if you see here, basically what we've got is we put material on trays and we run air through that so that it comes up and over the material and then out carrying with it the extra moisture. This is considered to be cross-circulation or through-circulation. Here's another example. We can also have vacuum shelf indirect drying. So in this case, we have material that comes down and we have little levers that sweep them across there to create lots of surface area and the material then will fall to the tray below with air circulating across this. We can do continuous tunnel dryers. So the material is being taken through probably on a conveyor belt, either countercurrently or co-currently to the airflow that is going across this to remove the area, the material. Rotary dryers are large versions of like your clothes dryer. And so the material is brought in and goes through some sort of conveyor system again and air is blown over that material as it goes through there. But this rotates through and you get good mixing because of all of these, uh, they call them lifting flights but basically they're just like little fingers almost that are moving the material. This is another form of a rotary dryer and what you'll see is that you kind of it kind of pulls up but as it moves it keeps jostling so that all the material stays exposed to those hot gases. A drum dryer sounds like it would be the same thing but what's happening is here the material is actually on the outside of the drum so it's picking up wet material and rotating through and as it dries a knife can scrape it off so that you can keep this cake cleaned from the drum to continue picking up fresh material and drying. This is a spray dryer Spray dryers, you're going to spray material through that's very wet but has solids in it. 
and it goes through the passes through the hot air and you end up with little dried pieces that collect and then of course all the various ways that you see people drawing crops or grains um, from very human driven to much more modern mechanized systems so this concludes our little introduction to drawing when we come back to class we're going to be talking about equilibrium moisture content and rate of drawing thank you very much for your time <music>